Welcome to my channel, Remember Me. Thank you so much for watching. Even if the case is solved, it's still so important to spread awareness and remember these people's stories. If you would like to recommend a case, solved or unsolved, please contact me on my details below. Caroline Dunn Maudie. On December 23rd, 1975, the Davie Police Department discovered the body of an unidentified white female floating in a canal in the area of 2600 SW 154th Avenue. It is thought that her body was there for 5 to 10 days prior to discovery. After carefully assessing the case and meeting with investigators from the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office, the Davy Police Department determined the circumstances of this case suggested homicide by drowning. She is believed to be between the ages of 15 to 27 years old. The victim was wearing blue jeans, a midriff flowered blouse, and open toe platform shoes. She was found wearing a silver ring with a blue center stone and six small diamond-like stones was on her left ring finger. She was also found wearing a puka necklace. The victim has a gap between her upper and lower front teeth. Road to Identification On November 15, 2019, Davy Police Cold Case Unit learnt the unidentified female was buried at Lake Forest Lawn in Davy, Florida. On December 17, 2019, the Davie Police Department made history by exhuming the remains of the unidentified female with the assistance of forensic anthropologist Heather Walsh Haney from Florida Gulf Coast University. The forensic ostological analysis estimated the skeletal remains were consistent with the 15 to 27 year old female of European or white ancestry. Once her remains were exhumed, Dr. Janice Listy, director at LSU FACES Laboratory Department of Geography and Anthropology, agreed to compose a digital image of the unidentified female. To continue the efforts to identify the unknown female, BODE technology was contacted for DNA extraction. The extraction was complete on August 19, 2020, and the DNA was sent to Parabon for whole genoming sequencing. CC Moore, who is a Parabon Chief Genetic Genealogist, stated, We were typically working with second, third, fourth cousins and beyond. That was what makes it different from the earlier technology where you need an exact match or an immediate family member. She faced a tall task, but she gave the detectives a few family names to contact. Normally, it would be really straightforward, said Moore. I'd build the matches family tree, figure out the common ancestors between them, and then build forward in time from those ancestors and find the missing woman. Moore eventually traced the tree to Neshoba County. After speaking to the family, she said they didn't know of any missing people, but one of them agreed to provide his DNA, Moore said. When we got his DNA analyzed, he was an even closer relative than I'd previously thought. That was super helpful. That allowed me to focus on a different branch, the one related to him, but not his immediate family. She then gave the detectives another family to contact. That is when they learned about Caroline Dunn Maudie's disappearance. It was really complicated, Moore said. If those detectives had not been so mindful and so willing to follow up, we wouldn't have found her. Caroline's sister was contacted by detectives, who then contacted her nieces Jeanette and Edna, who are Caroline's daughters. Identification Caroline Dunn Maudie was born December 24, 1953, in Philadelphia, in Neshoba County. The Dunn family moved to Sunflower County sometime after that. She was found in Davie one day before her 22nd birthday. The ET did an exhaustive search at the library and multiple high school yearbooks, but could not find any record of Caroline attending school. She had two daughters at the time. Her first daughter died during childbirth. Her second daughter, Caroline Jeanne, was born a couple of years later, and her third daughter, Edna Maudie, was three days old when her mother disappeared. Caroline left her at the hospital. David Earl Maudie, her husband, and the father of her children filed for divorce in September of 1974, according to court records. 
He was granted a divorce in Sunflower County in November of 1975, just weeks before Caroline's death. David Maudie spent a good time in and out of jail. He was convicted of a capital offence in 1981. He received a prison sentence and died in prison, according to his children. The girls were taken in and raised by their grandmother, Edna Earl Maudy. Jeanette became more than a sister to young Edna. She was like a mother to her too. To add another twist to this story, Caroline's own mother had gone missing from the area in 1964 and the family apparently did not hear from her after that. Police said during the course of the cold case investigation, they learnt that Caroline's mother lived for 42 more years and died in Florida in 2006. It is not clear at this time whether there is any connection between Caroline being in Florida in 1975 and her mother dying in the same state years later. What happened to Caroline is unclear. She went missing from Indianola, Mississippi, and the next time she was seen, she was floating in a canal nearly 1,000 miles away from Davy. Her daughters insist that she did not leave town alone. Jeanette says she recalls the individual her mother reportedly left with, even though she was very young at the time. Aftermath. The detectives cannot reveal much, but they would like to know what Caroline was doing a good 15 hour drive away from her home in the Mississippi Delta. If you have any information, please contact the Davy Police Department or the Broward Medical Examiner's Office at 954-357-5200. Her daughters are just as passionate about finding Caroline's killer. A few weeks ago, Edna went to Davy, where she learnt the details about her mother's fate. She even visited the canal where her mother's body was discovered over four decades ago. She couldn't have fell into that thing without somebody pushing her, Edna said. While there, she received some of the personal items her mother had on her, some of which had been described in the papers many years ago, including a mood ring and a necklace. Jeanette wears the ring, Edna has the necklace. Glad I got closure, Edna said. I'm never going to forget my mum. I never knew her, but she was my best friend. She's still my mum. I just thank God that I got courage and know now, because all these years I was just trying to search for her, but I'm just thankful, Edna Mowney said. She's in my heart. I would go meet her, she said. If she didn't want to have anything to do with me, that would be okay, but I did want to meet her and ask her why she left. When I talk to my mama, I say, I love you, I forgive you, and I wanted to meet you. May Caroline Dunn Maudie rest in peace. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and for taking the time to remember this case. It would really mean a lot if you could share this video to spread these people's stories in the hope that new information will surface. To recommend a case, please contact me on Instagram or send me an email. Thank you!